Hi, today we're going to show you how to flush the seawater side of a Caterpillar C18. Um, we're going to be flushing the raw water side, which will include the uh, after cooler and the heat exchanger, which are the two most common problems that you'll find on the raw water side of this engine. Um, the first thing to do before we do anything would be to close the, the seacock, the, in, the seawater inlet here. We're going to do that by closing this valve here. Now that the seacock is closed, um, we've isolated the system from the, from the outside of the boat. Um, following it up, you'll see the sea strainer, which will then go up to, we've already disconnected it, but it will come to the raw water pump. Now, because a raw water pump is a positive displacement pump, you cannot push water past it, um, so we need to remove the impeller. So we've done this caterpillar. Um, uses a bolt that's usually supplied with the engine that you just screw on and it'll pull the impeller out. We've then reinstalled the cap which will now allow us to pass directly through the raw water pump. It will then travel up, go through the charge air cooler which cools the incoming air with seawater. It will then pass through to the heat exchanger which is on the front of the engine. It will then go to the other side of the engine which we can look at this engine and see where it would come out come out here and then it would go overboard into the exhaust system. You can see here this is the heat exchanger we're on the other side of the engine now and this is where it's going to come out and go into the exhaust system. So we've already loosened up the hose clamps and we're ready to remove this hose. We now have our flushing unit that we've already made which is basically going to adapt from this fitting here to our hose connection for our flushing unit. This may vary from job to job, whoever um, is doing the application, but you need something like this to adapt from the engine fitting to your hose. So we've done that, and you could see here where we've hooked up to our, our flushing unit, and this will be where we'll inject the barnacle buster solution into the engine, go through the solution, go through the engine, and then it will come out on the other side as we've shown you here through this hose and back to the truck. Because we have disconnected and hooked up directly to the heat exchanger we do not have to worry about the reduction gear cooling line or this line under here which is hard to see which goes to the shaft seal. Now we're ready to go to the flushing unit. Now we're here we are on the dock. Uh, for this particular application we're going to be using our uh, flushing unit, the Porter Flush. Um, the beauty of the Porter Flush is it's built onto a hand truck so it allows you to easily get it to the, the side of the boat here on the dock. Um, it's also small so it's get really close. Um, one of the other benefits of the Porter Flush is it allows you to, here is where you're going to connect and, and return from the system, but it allows you with these valves here to reverse the flow without having to um, remove any of the pipes. You also have a pressure gauge which allows you to monitor the, uh, the system during the flush. So now we're going to hook up our hoses. These are the hoses that we saw earlier hooked up to the engine. We're out here on the dock and we're going to hook up to our Porter Flush. Based on the position that we have these valves in, the pump is going to bring the solution up and it is going to pump the barnacle buster solution out from this hose through the engine. It will come back through this hose and then come into our tank. You can see here how our system is arranged inside. Now we're ready to start filling the system. We're going to start by filling the bucket with fresh water. Once we have the suction fully covered, we can then go ahead and turn the pump on. You can see here now we're getting a return from our system. So now we're just going to let it run for a little bit to make sure we've evacuated all of the air from the system. One thing I like to do is note the level on the side of the tank and a relation that you can remember. 
if you could keep an eye on this for a couple minutes and you notice that the level has not dropped, you can tell just from standing out here that there are no leaks in the system as you're not losing any more water. At this point, it tells me that we're ready to introduce the barnacle buster concentrate into the solution. The dilution ratio of barnacle buster concentrate is four to one, whereas one gallon of concentrate will yield five gallons of ready to use product. For a C18 Caterpillar engine, we already know that one gallon of concentrate is more than enough to, to do the application. We've ensured there's no leaks and now we're ready to just pour it in. The product will immediately start to mix with the water and will immediately start working as soon as it comes in contact with the marine growth. As you can see immediately, the, pro the uh, product, the Barnacle Buster Solution, is changing color. It's gone a very dark brown. This is an indication that this engine is in need of uh, cleaning. It's, and you can see the foaming um, as the product goes to work. As the Barnacle Buster Solution circulates through the engine, um, you can see that it's basically attacking and removing all of the marine growth and calcium buildup within the engine. Um, at the same time, it's safe to circulate through your engine. It's not going to harm any of the metals, gaskets, or seals that you could commonly find in the C18 Caterpillar engine. A flush like this, based on the, uh, the color of the water, um, would take about an hour to an hour and a half. So now that we're circulating our flushing unit and the Barnacle Buster solution, we come back down to the engine to make sure that there are no leaks and to trace the system. Here's the product coming in, going through the raw water pump, coming up then into the charge air cooler, out into the heat exchanger, across to the other side of the heat exchanger through the fitting, and back through this hose to our flushing unit. While we're waiting for the application to finish, I just wanted to take this time to show you how safe the Barnacle Buster solution is. Uh, here we have an ordinary seashell. Um, I'm going to take some product right from the flushing unit. And you can see the seashell dissolving right in my hand. If I were to leave this in my hand for approximately five minutes, it would fully dissolve. Another demonstration we could show is just to take an empty bottle here. I'm going to fill it up right from the solution here. So we have, and I'm going to take an ordinary seashell, drop it in. Another point that we can make by doing this demonstration is a lot of times we get questions on, is my product still good? Um, you could use Barnacle Buster solution basically until it's saturated. Um, so a good way to check if you do not have a pH meter would be to do this test with a seashell or a, a calcium based rock. Take a small sample, put it in, and if it's still bubbling like that, your product is still good and you could use it on the other engine. If you were to see very little bubbling or none at all, you would know that the product is fully saturated and needs to be discarded. So now here we are halfway through the flush and what we're going to do is reverse the flow. The port of flush allows us to reverse the flow without having to disconnect any of the hoses. We could just simply turn the pump off, reverse these valves, and that's going to reverse the flow through the engine. This is an important task as it allows you to back flush the engine. So if there's any debris that cannot be dissolved, such as a impeller uh, blade or some other foreign material that might have gotten it into the engine, it's going to end up in the bucket here. So we'll first turn the pump off. We'll swap the valves. Now we turn the pump back on. So now with the pump back on, you could see that previously we were discharging on this side, but now we're discharging on this side. And you can immediately see some debris floating which shows that back flushing was a good idea. Okay, now we've completed 
the application and we're ready to do our fresh water flush. First thing we do is shut down the pump. Then we're going to remove the return hose. And then we're going to put this. Now we take a water hose, and we put it in the bucket and turn it on. Now we turn the pump back on. We're going to watch the overboard until it becomes clear. Now the freshwater flush is complete. We've allowed the bucket to drain down. We turn the pump off. Then we remove the other hose. And now we're ready to go in the boat and disconnect. Start by unhooking the suction hose. There's gonna be some residual water left in the lines. Um, it's impossible to drain, so we just allow this to go to the bilge. Now that the hose is removed, we can remove our flushing point. And then reinstall the water line coming from the seacock. Now that our hose is reinstalled, we're ready to take the cap off the end of the seawater pump and reinstall our impeller. Now you can see, it's always a good idea to take a look in here, feel around, just make sure everything's in order. Um, now that we have the impeller out, it's always a good time before we reinstall it to take a good look at it, to make sure it's in good shape. As long as there are no cracks on the impeller, this impeller is good enough to reuse. Now that the impeller is in, we're ready to reinstall the cap. It's best to put all of the bolts in hand tight first before you start tightening them down. Then when tightening, You go in a crisscross pattern. And now we're ready to remove the discharge side. There shouldn't be a lot of water coming out of this side because we've already drained it down for the injection side. We then just reinstall the discharge and tighten the clamps. Now that the engine is reassembled, we've opened the seacock back up and everything's back together, we're ready to run the engine to make sure that there are no leaks. And that's it. Now we've successfully cleaned the raw water side of a C-18 engine. Thank you.